Sayakuto is an ugly orphan, destined to become the demon king, so he was bullied and hated by everyone until he rizzed up all the school baddies on his way to destroy God. Under the night sky on a rainy night, a hot babe is standing with a baby. She looks at the sky and its darkness above and prays for the survival of the baby before dropping him off in front of a church. Later, Akuto arrives in the city by train. As he carries his luggage full of dirty magazines up the stairs, a girl runs past him showing him a beautiful view of her ravine. Oh my God! Wow! Before making his way to the top, he noticed an old lady dropped her luggage and spilling all her dirty old lady clothes on the ground. Akuto sees this and gets back down to help her. He collects everything and receives her gratitude. He then tries to help her carry the suitcase, but the old lady refuses, making him look like a snatcher. Seeing this, the girl from before comes back and drop kicks him on his head, showing him another detailed view of her heaven down there. After the misunderstanding is resolved, the girl reveals her name, Hattori Junko. She turns out to be the granddaughter of the old lady, as she reveals that she is in the town for the same reason as Akuto, to join the Constant Magic Academy, the two of them decide to take the train together and discuss their goals. Akuto's dream is to become a holy priest as he wants to do loads of good deeds. Junko sees his resolve and warms up to him. The two of them decide to become friends. Junko unsheaths her sword a little and makes a pact with him as that's the way her family makes friends. Some time later, the two of them arrive at the school and part ways hoping that they would both be in the same class. Akuto meets Atori and finds out that the school has a system of sorting the students into different classes. The two of them go to the sorting room together, and Akuto is told that his destiny lies in becoming a demon king. Completely shocked by all of this, he asks for another evaluation, but the result remains the same. This scares everyone in the room and they all run away. In the end, as Akuto is trying to figure out what has happened to him, the nurse reveals that she has been waiting for such an interesting specimen for a long, long time. She tells him all about what will happen to him at this school now that everyone knows that he's destined to become the Demon King. She tells him that he'll be prosecuted, bullied, and completely ignored by everyone, which means he'll be getting no hose to his name either. She then takes him to the classroom and reveals that he'll be in the same class as Junko, and she will be their homeroom teacher. As soon as he enters the class, everybody starts dissing him, so he loses his cool and decides to make an impression by introducing himself in a flashy way. He makes a speech about how the whole system is wrong for sorting people into categories when they themselves don't want to become that thing. He thinks that this speech might raise those chicks, but it has the opposite effect. Apparently, the last demon king made a similar speech about the system and later conquered the world, torturing everyone and destroying everything. As he tries to explain himself, Tori sends him to his seat in the back. The class resumes, and the debate on who will be the class representative starts. Tori asks Junko to become the class rep, but another student, Hiroshi, who is probably in love with mean pretty boys, names Akuto as a competition. Akuto doesn't want to make Junko angry and tries to withdraw. He even tries to do community service by volunteering for cleaning duty, but this backfires as well because cleaners in this school are actually assassins who maintain the deep, dark secrets of the school. All of these shenanigans make Junko angry, and she challenges Akuto to a duel. But when Akuto claims that they are friends and they shouldn't fight, the whole class starts suspecting Junko, and she gets angrier. She starts attacking him relentlessly, while he keeps dodging. Everyone then starts suspecting that Akuto's demon king powers have already started having an effect as he has seduced a girl getting angry at being blamed for thirsting for the Demon King's rod. Emotional damage! Junko powers up and attacks Akuto at full power. Akuto unintentionally releases a powerful wave and destroys half of the classroom, along with Junko's clothes, putting her jugs in front of everyone to see. So Akuto's failed attempts to make peace with Junko, later he meets with Hiroshi once again and Hiroshi starts calling him Big Bro, as he idealizes him. The two of them then decide to visit the girl's dorm. Hiroshi thinks that the Demon King is thirsty for a workout, while Akuto just wants to make peace with Junko. He decides to climb to her room instead of walking through the front door. As he knocks on her window, he sees her raw melons once again. The other girls start screaming as they think that he came here for peeping and start making a fuss. Junko gets fired up and becomes a murderous maniac. She starts chasing him down and attacks him relentlessly. He runs through the woods and comes across another crazy chick, Kana Soga. 
Kina starts monologuing about how she has met Akuto because of fate. Junko pays no attention to her bullshit and charges straight at the two of them. Kina decides to protect Akuto and pulls out a sword. She starts taking Junko on, and the two of them exchange blows over and over again. Despite finding hard, the two of them cannot decide on a winner. And that's when Akuto charges up another explosion unintentionally and blows a giant hole in the ground. Junko falls to the ground and falls unconscious. On the other hand, Kina thinks that the explosion was her doing and goes on another crazy monologue about her inner power awakening. As if all this bull wasn't enough, another girl magically pops out of nowhere, since there's no end to and tells Akuto that she is an observer. She also mentions that her name is Kuron, and she's here to observe Akuto and his activities. Akuto is surprised at all of this craziness and doesn't know what to do. In a flashback, a cute red-haired girl is crying in the church when a boy who looks like Akuto's kid version arrives with a few nuns and hands her a bird-shaped hairpin. The girl stops crying and stares at the boy. He leaves without saying a single word, knowing that he has comforted the girl with his hairpin. In the present, Kuron pulls out his silly-looking gun from her bag and shoots a beam at Junko. The beam kneels her and she wakes up, gets completely embarrassed seeing she has no clothes. Kuron says that she might not have had the patient's permission, but it was her job to heal her according to the medical law. She talks like a robot, so Akuto realizes that she's a Lilithan, an android. However, knowing that women can't be so peaceful, Akuto wonders how this android is so mature and calm. She then approaches Akuto and tells him that she needs to question him while lifting Kanan up. She tells him that she has been ordered to observe all his actions by some god match, and she needs to question his involvement in all of this destruction. Hearing their conversation, Kina fears that everything might be reported to the headmaster and decides to run away. Her first step is taking off her clothes, a feast for the eyes, and then transforming into a little hairpin and then running away. Akuto gets surprised by all of this and picks up her undies to observe her rice cake size. Kuron then tells him that she can't trace her for some odd reason and that she's a part of his class, according to the school database. After going through her clothes and looking deeply through her plot, Akuto tries to make sense of her motives as he holds her headband. The two of them then present themselves in front of the principal and tell him all the facts about both the incidents that Akuto caused. Kuron vouches for Akuto as she can sense emotions that he never had the intention to harm Junko. The principal concludes that it's fine and now that Junko is healed, there's no need to worry. He then looks at Akuto and tells him that he was the one who contacted the government to hire an observer for him, as he is destined to become the Demon King. Once the meeting is concluded, Akuto meets Story outside, where she convinces him that the school faculty has good intentions. She asks Akuto how he pulled off such powerful moves, and he tells her that it was all unintentional, thanks to his focus on ripping clothes for his pleasure. <laughs> yeah, boy. He then rants about the magic system and how he is a Rizalus know-it-all. Tori tells him that he may have a natural ability to channel mana, but he's such a loser that he can't control his power properly. That's why it overloads and explodes. She then hands him his student handbook, so that he can call anyone in the academy anytime he wants. After, he goes back home to relax as it has been a really long day. Kuron keeps standing there by his side since she cannot do anything without his orders, so to get her off his back, he tells her to go to sleep. Kuron complies with the order, unbuttons her shirt, and gets on the bed. Akuto starts getting hard and tells her that it's not good for his health if she sleeps here. She tries to argue a bit, but after roasting him for being a loser, she goes into the closet and decides to sleep there. The next day, he goes to school and tells Hiroshi how sleep deprived he is since he spent all night hounding his stick to Kuron. As they are talking, they encounter a beautiful and elegant girl, Fujiko. She calls out to Akuto and tells him how she knows about the whole situation from the sneaky b Kuron. She flirts with him a bit and tells him that he can come to her for any help he needs. After getting happy that he talked to a woman for once, <laughs> he goes to class and finds out that Junko is absent. Everyone in the class starts talking shit about him and his cultured habits. After the class is over, he goes to the restroom and calls Fujiko. She picks up the call as she takes off her shirt, and two humongous melons pop out. He asks for his help regarding the Junko matter, and she tells him to come to an abandoned forest at the back of the mountain alone. She then tells him how to shut down Karon. When he mentions to Karon and Haruta that he will be going to that remote area, 
they make fun of him as they believe Akuto is going out there to work out with Karone. Once they arrive at the foot of the mountain, the two of them share some healthy banter and start making their way up. Akuto starts looking for opportunities to grab Karone's tail as that is necessary to shut her up. He tries over and over again to look down her plot for a tail while enjoying the view but Karone catches him in the act and calls him a loser. Just as they are trying to figure out this peeping problem, a big mana-enhanced dog attacks them out of nowhere. Karone tries to exterminate it by using her gun but fails in her mission since she's useless. Akuto pushes her out of harm's way and decides to take the beast on. After some back and forth, he figures out that if he simply absorbs the magic from this dog, it will revert to its original form thanks to Karone's advice. Once he pulls it off, the two of them start discussing how Akuto's actions are heroic as he saves Karone. She tells him that she's surprised since she only thought of him as a peeping virgin loser. The two of them then suddenly encounter Kina as the puppy runs over her invisible body. She's naked and disappears as soon as she sees the two of them. Karone tells him that she may hide her mana, but she can't disappear with her clothes or scent. As she tries to pick up her bag, Akuto sees the opportunity and grabs her rice cakes. He shoves her down by pulling her tail and that's exactly in time for Fujiko's arrival. Fujiko tells her that she'll talk to Junko and set up a proper meeting. She also advises him that he should go to the disciplinary committee if he simply wants to help people. She also gives him two pellets to use if all else fails as they help people understand each other's feelings. After she's gone, Akuto reactivates Koron and once again gets misunderstood for looking at her plots. But before the two of them carry on that debate, the puppy comes back, trying to chase a bird-shaped hairpin. Akuto remembers that hairpin and figures out that the girl he must have given that to must be Kina. After chasing her for a while, she falls on top of him completely naked, giving Kuron the wrong idea as she arrives a few seconds late. She charges Akuto with assault after giving Kina's clothes back to her, and tells him that he will be going to juvenile prison for all these acts as he should. What? But Kina tells him that if she saves him, he will need to listen to his request. Once Akuto agrees thanks to Kuron's pressure. She saves him by telling her that she was the one who fell on top of him. She then asks to be his friend, confusing Akuto, since he's and can't accept a girl trying to be his friend. At Junko's end, she receives a call from Fujiko, and hears about the whole meeting with Akuto. Fujiko lies to her a bit and manipulates her into meeting Akuto. After the call, Fujiko opens a secret door and changes into her mommy milker's outfit. She then claims that everything is going according to her plan to get the Demon King under her control. She then kisses a severed head in a water-filled container and calls that head her elder brother. In the past, Fujiko, as a child, can be seen playing with a toy. She appears to have a brother complex and plays with her big brother frequently. But things change soon as Fujiko receives the news of her brother's death. Her mother tells her to inherit the family name and the responsibilities that come with it as she plans to never show weakness again. Coming back to the present where she's blessed with the greatest melons in the world, she is seen talking to a person and scheming about acquiring Akuto's power in his favor, considering he is gonna be the person who destroys the world one day as the Demon King. Moving to Akuto's side, taking a bath with Hiroshi, the two of them start comparing stick sizes. Hiroshi claims that his stick is pretty average even though he is supposed to be the Demon King. Emotional damage! He then starts talking about the darker side of the school where people practice black magic and run a secret organization. He mentions that Junko is the leader of the public morals side and fights these black magic users to maintain peace and discipline around the school. As the two of them get out of the bath, they come across Karon, who makes fun of their stick sizes and even asks Akuto to show her his sausage. As he's wiping himself down, he gets a call from Fujiko. She tells him that his meeting with Junko has been set. He thanks her and visits the student council room first for his meeting. He meets a number of hot high school chicks who tell him that being the head of the disciplinary committee isn't really a job for the weak as everybody thinks they are a pain in the ass and try to pick fights with them. Even though he's a little hesitant, Akuto decides that he will do it and leaves for his next class. Later, it is announced in the school that Akuto will become the head of the disciplinary committee. Cutting back to Akuto in the classroom, he ponders upon how the whole school thinks that he's an evil dodgeback and he must do something about it. And so, he comes back home and decides to grope Karone's rice cakes. He knows that he must do something about Karone before going to meet with Junko, as she might find out about his dealing with Fujiko behind his back, so he tries to reach for the tail again to turn her off. 
However, he is caught in the act by Kina and tries to cover it up with some lies. Kina starts babbling on and on about retarded stuff as Karon joins her idiotic schemes. After a while, he shakes Kina off by saying that he needs to study, and then Karon invites him to grab her rice cakes, since she's a Lilidin. Akuto sees this as an opportunity and decides to take her up on the offer. He grabs it and pulls her tail out, turning her off. And so, he's ready to meet Junko, as he has the love pellets in his gun as a last resort if nothing works out. He goes to an underground building of the school, as that's where the meeting has been set, and sees how the whole setup is like that of barracks in the army. But once he enters the area, he gets ambushed by a pink-haired discount Justin Bieber and his goons. They hit him on the head and try to attack him again. But he repels the attack by focusing his mana, gets up, and starts beating them one by one. And then they bring in Haruto, who is completely beaten up for being sus and checking their sticks out. Akuto then gets angry and starts completely demolishing everyone. He then singles out the leader and starts torturing him. As he's doing it, he gets caught in the act by Junko. She gets the wrong idea and thinks that he's torturing everyone to please himself. She thinks that Akuto is using the disciplinary committee as an excuse to beat people up. Akuto knows that right now, Junko would not listen to him at all, so he decides to use the pellets he received from Fujiko. However, when he tries to use them, the gun is empty. Junko uses a smoke bomb and tells Akuto to prepare himself as she will gather people against him. Fujiko is watching all of this unfold on her magic ball. She starts wondering why the drug pellets are missing as she sees Akuto carry Hiroshi out of there. Her brother's head intervenes and asks her the nature of those drugs. She tells him that the drugs would have made the users her slaves. Once Akuto goes back home and reactivates Karon, he tells her everything and apologizes for his actions. She tells him that the mess he created himself must be resolved by himself. He then remembers that he talked to his teacher about this, but she was of no help as this school was made during war times and has the policy to punish traitors. Thus, the faculty won't intervene in any duels since that policy is still active. On Junko's end, we see her bandaged milkers and her resolve to fight to the death the next day. However, Kina is listening to all of her monologues in her hairpin form. The next day, when it's time for the duel, Hiroshi decides to join in. But Akuto tells him that he doesn't need to die. His opponents are an army of students under Junko's leadership who have nothing better to do. The challenge requires Akuto to survive for one hour if he wants to win. And so the battle begins as the army of students hits Akuto with a barrage of projectiles. He then tries to run away from them, but fails as they have all been acting as a unit. When he's cornered, Junko comes and starts telling him how he's wrong. The two of them then decide to end it all with a fight to the death as Junko won't listen to a word he says. But Ken arrives just in time and tells everyone how big Akuto's stick is. She tries to convince Junko that Akuto is a great person. The background jokers then decide that Junko must be involved with Akuto, and they are all dragged into a lover's quarrel. So they attack both of them together as Junko decides to team up with Akuto to survive this mess. However, just as they are about to be attacked, Karon shoots a beam out of her large cannon. The cannon shows a rain of rice that makes everyone friends again. Turns out Kana took out the drug pellets from Akuto's gun and mixed them in rice after diluting them. She then used Karon to distribute it to everyone on a massive scale. Back at home, Karon analyzes the drugs and tells him that the pellets are actually made of black magic that makes you swear absolute loyalty to one person. Kina says that it's no big deal and the long day finally ends for Akuto and Ko. On Fujiko's end, all the girls and boys under the effect of the drug start coming to him and touching her in all different kinds of places, as a green-haired woman watches from outside her window and laughs at how Fujiko's own plan backfired on her. Once again coming back to the past, we see a glimpse of Fujiko's brother trying to infiltrate a facility. However, he gets caught by a mysterious man. Coming back to the present now, life has gotten a bit normal for the demon king Akuto. Fujiko is stalking him as he attends the magic class on the ground outside school. She leaves after a while, however, after pledging that she will definitely make the demon king her servant. Hiroshi tells him that Kana doesn't usually come for magic classes since she is not very good at magic. The teacher tells everyone to pair up, so naturally the demon lord decides to go with Haruto. However, Harishi refuses and Junko asks him to pair up with her despite her Sundar behavior. She then tells Akuto not to make a scene in front of everyone. 
The two of them passed a magic ball to each other as part of their training. But when Akuto throws the ball, it gets extremely massive and destroys the entire area, exposing the cups of everyone around and making a huge hole in the ground. Akuto then goes to his teacher for some words of advice. She tells him that he needs some extreme strength of mind to control so much mana. So she tells him to train in the mental self-discipline chamber. Hiroshi intervenes by saying that the chamber is infamous for students never remaining the same afterward. But the teacher shuts him up. Later at home, as he is packing for the chamber, Kuron tells him that she will be tagging along with him as his observer. Akuta tells her that she has been slacking off on work ever since she came here, and the two of them prepare for some training in the mental self-discipline chamber. On Fujiko's end, she has a serious look on her face, so her brother's head inquires about it. Fujiko tells him that she will be executing her plan of getting her hands on Akuto when he goes into the mental self-discipline chamber. She then remembers how her brother died while exploring a section of the school building. It is said that they tried to use necromancy on him to find out how he died, but they couldn't get anything out of him. And so it was assumed that he was a who ran away from the enemy and died in the process, sullying the Fujiko family name for the future. As she remembers these painful memories, Fujiko gets sad. On Akuto's end, when he arrives in front of the mental health chamber, he sees that it simply looks like an isolation chamber. He still enters it, and just as he's about to focus on something, Kuron enters alongside him, hoping for some one-on-one -on -one action. She then tries to put her jugs and plots right next to Akuto's arm I'm gonna come. Oh. so that he can properly train with his stick. Just as Akuto is about to get some distance in between them, his hand grabs another chick's melons. Turns out, Kana followed them all too, and is completely naked as well. Oh my! As Akuto tries to get through the yapping and blabbering of these two girls, little does he know that Fujiko arrives outside the chamber and plans to shoot a drug that will make Akuto her slave. As she laughs at her foolproof plan outside, Akuto and the others discover a treasure map inside one of the walls of the chamber. However, Akuto pays it no mind and starts meditating. Just as he thought he was finally free of their <laughs> Kana starts dancing around saying she has to pee. Akuto gives her a waterproof bag to do it, but Kana is an annoying piece of shit and only wants to do it outside. She starts banging on the door to go outside, making Fujiko think that Akuto has gone insane. She decides that she doesn't need the drug and that her jugs will be enough to calm him down and win him over. So, she opens it from the outside, giving everyone a break from Kena. She then sees the treasure map in Akuto's hand and takes it back to her room. She shows it to her brother's head, claiming that it's his handwriting, but he tells her that he doesn't know anything. Later, as Fujiko is wondering what the map stuff is about, she encounters a green-haired girl, the same one who was spying outside her window. After this encounter, Fujiko sees some students gathered outside the class and finds out that the map has been displayed there. She goes back to her room, only to find out that the map has been stolen. She then blames Akuto for all of this as he was the only person who knew about the map aside from herself. As the two of them are arguing, they come across Kana pasting copies of the map throughout the school. She claims that she's making sure everybody tries to live the true spirit of a pirate adventure, proving herself to be an annoying piece of shit. Afterwards, Akuto is sitting in the class, lamenting how everybody he knows is absent due to one reason or another. When some students arrive completely beat up and heavily injured. When Akuto asks for the reason, they tell him that it happened because they were looking for the treasure. He then goes to the student council room to meet Shirishi, the president. She tells him that everybody else is a useless freeloader, and he must step up as the head of the disciplinary committee to declare that searching for the treasure is prohibited. So he goes with her to the auditorium and announces it in front of the whole school. Everybody calls him a piece of shit for this as they know that Sova Kena, the distributor of the map, works for him. As everybody is talking shit about him, the green-haired girl from before attacks him and puts her legs around his face. She tells him that he must step up and go look for the treasure to confirm if the map is real or not since it is too dangerous for anyone else. The rest of the background characters agree with her and start pressurizing him. So to make sure that nobody thinks it's Akuto's trap, he decides to go there and investigate. Shirishi wishes him luck and a safe return, and so his journey begins. He packs up for the trip, and just when things are about to get peaceful, the green-haired girl comes once again and tells him that she will be tagging along with him. She reveals her name to be Eiko, and that's how the journey begins for Akuto and his friends. 
When Hiroshi becomes too annoying, Eiko starts wondering if he's sus. <laughs> and just as their banter is about to start, they reach the first point marked on the map. The first point marked on the map is a labyrinth. As Kuron finally does something useful and gives information about Yamamoto Buchiro, everyone starts searching for his grave once they get inside to get more information about the treasure. They see piles of corpses everywhere as Eiko starts making fun of Akuto for being a wuss. Just as they are having fun poking fun at each other, a cyclone-type enemy appears. Eiko tries to take it on and fails miserably as her clothes get torn, putting that curvy body up for display. She tries to act desperate and tells Akuto to save her. Akuto obliterates the tornado, and she wakes up right after that, ready to jump on his stick. In all of this commotion, they'd all stumble upon the grave of Yamamoto Buchiro. On the other side, Junko tries to sneak into Akuto's room for some early evening workout. But when she finds out that he's not present, she wakes up Kana and asks about his whereabouts. When she finds out that he went with Eiko, she says that it's bad and runs towards his location to warn him about the dangers. On Akuto's side, as he is searching for something in the grave, he finds the toy that Fujiko and her brother used before he died. He plays the audio, and it's an audio message meant to be played in some night's facility. Fujiko is watching all of this via her magic ball and asks her brother's head about this toy. He says that he remembers that toy but he doesn't know anything about why it's there. Fujiko starts breaking down after a while as she sees that her brother only gives her emotionless answers. Just then, Kana drops down, and as usual, she's promoting her own life ends by showing off her body. She then tells Fujiko to go to Akuto. Fujiko agrees but has some ulterior motives. On Junko's side, she's running at full speed to warn Akuto, but she falls in a trap and fails to make it to the entrance. On Akuto's side, everybody starts searching for the knight's room that the toy mentioned. As they arrive there, they see big armor standing there. Hirusha feels that one of them is moving. Just as Akuto is about to tell him that he's being a scared <laughs> the armor starts attacking relentlessly. Akuto and the others save him as he tries to fight the knight because of his annoying nature. But he then tells him that he feels the need to be such an annoying piece of shit because of his weakness. Akuto calms him down and the gang keeps searching. As they arrive in a cave during their search, they find a hot spring. Turns out that they need to go to the other side of the water. Akuto volunteers since he hasn't done anything useful up till now and goes to the other side of the water. Eiko follows him and climbs on top of him, seducing him with her jugs rubbing against his back. Cutting to Junko for a bit, she's enjoying her bath in the same hot spring after falling into that trap since she wants to relax a little. But then she hears Eiko and Akuto probably working out and decides to pay them a visit. When she arrives, Eiko is telling Akuto about the treasure being the legacy of the previous Demon King. She claims that she wants Akuto to have it. Junko hears all of this and tells Akuto to get away from her. He tells her that she's an Imperial agent and is only manipulating him. The two girls start fighting as Eiko gets angry. As they are fighting, Akuto sees a shrine on the side. Just as he sees it, a wolf comes from behind the shrine and attacks them. Akuto saves Junko and takes care of the wolf. Eiko gets angry because he didn't choose her while Junko gets flattered. The rest of the guys arrive too with Fujiko and Kena. All of them go inside the shrine and find a key. Later they get out of the cave and start analyzing what has happened. Fujiko tells them about her brother and decides to use the key. The key makes a summoning circle and everybody is summoned to a new place. Shiriishi is standing there and claims that this is a game designed by the student council and the reward is a kiss from her. As Akuto denies that useless reward, Fujiko rushes inside the building in front of her to find out what her brother saw. She activates the systems using the key and the toy and summons a dragon. The dragon asks her if she is worthy and starts attacking her to look for proof. Just then, Kane arrives and says some more dumb shit, leading to a flashback of Fujiko's big brother. Turns out he erased his memories and got manipulated by the blonde guy into doing his bidding. That's how he was killed. Fujiko sees this and gets an even bigger brother complex. As the dragon and Fujiko continue their battle, they move from that place. Akuto decides that he needs to save Fujiko. Shirishi tries to block his path as she thinks that if the dragon recognizes Akuto as the Demon King, then he will definitely become the Demon King. He tells Kuron to hit everyone else out of there while Junko joins him to get a head start in competing for his magnum. Shirishi starts fighting and knocks him back. 
Akuto wakes up and claims that he's only there to help Fujiko and runs after her. He starts fighting the dragon and gets Fujiko out of the way. He fights the dragon relentlessly and beats him at the end. The dragon asks for his name and claims that he is his master, and he says that Akuto must be called Demon King and live here now. Fujiko decides to serve him as a black mage while Shirishi kisses him as a reward for beating the dragon. They take a picture to commemorate all of this. One day, Corona is reporting Akuto's progress to all her higher-ups. They ask about Akuto's interest in women. When they tell Koron that she needs to seduce Akuto or she will be dealt with. Later, Akuto is enjoying a day at the beach when he looks at Kana and his date is ruined. When Kana tries to flirt with him, he tells her that she's still too childish to evoke any thoughts out of him. Just then, Koron comes and tries to rub cream on Akuto's back. When Akuto tries to resist her temptations as a Sigma male, she simply takes her clothes off and tries to seduce him regardless. Akuto tries to avoid all of that fuss. He remembers that the teacher told him he wasn't allowed to attend the seaside school with the rest of the class because nobody liked him. He goes back home and starts getting depressed over his friendless, this life. Koron tells him that it's a way to get closer to girls. She then tries to make his magnum hot and stiff in different ways. However, Akuto believes that she's being very weird and does his best to resist. The next morning, she wakes him up with an elbow to his most sensitive part, almost destroying all of his generation. She then tries to do different cosplays to attract him. She becomes a little sister, a nurse, a classmate, anything that would seduce him. So Akuto decides to run away from this crazy bitch. He goes to Peterhausen's place to escape. He finds out that Kanan is sleeping on his body and gets some moments of peace before Koron joins in. Peter Hazen and Koron join in and make fun of Akuto for not being interested in her even after all that temptation. Meanwhile, Akuto just wants a proper relationship filled with love and commitment. Coming back to the seaside, Akuto is grabbing Koron's micro jugs as Junko sees him and gets the wrong idea again. She tries to slice him up for public indecency, but Akuto blocks and then explains the situation. Corona is forced to apologize for her actions, yet does not plan on stopping anytime soon. Putting all this show on attracts some audience. Everybody from the school watches as they try to make sense of this fiasco as Corona makes fun of Junko for thinking like a virgin. After some time, Akuto gets some alone time with Junko and apologizes to her for any of his actions that may have upset her in any way. The two of them, along with Kana, decide to go for a swim. As they are playing, Kana finds a weird-looking piece from the sea. Looking and behaving exactly like a slimy magnum, Kana shakes it in front of Junko over and over again, until the slime gets all over her face, embarrassing the naive virgin even more. She runs to Akuto and hugs him as she's scared and embarrassed. Akuto becomes a gentleman and wipes it all from her face while comforting her with his uplifting words. She then tells him to call her by her first name as well showing that she's ready to move on from being a lowly virgin. Just as the mood is set, Koron arrives and pulls her swimsuit down. Akuto tells Koron to shut the hell up and stop being annoying. She tells him that she forgot her own limits and goes away after saying some depressing things. After a while, as Akuto and Kana are strolling in the town, they come across a depressed Hiroshi. He tries to ask for a reason and finds out that it's his hometown and there is a legend associated with it. The legend says that if the Demon King comes to this land, that a monster will appear in the middle of the sea. He then claims that everybody in this town has imagined a hero who would save them, even though the hero never came. He then runs away after crying over being a b Later in the inn, Akuto decides to leave so that he can find out who has been spying on him since he came here. Koron decides to tag along and whips out a mana detector machine out of her Cutting to Fujiko, dressed as a Dom Mommy. She is imagining herself and Akuto on the throne as she plans to make every male fantasy true by orchestrating a pleasure session for the Demon King and controlling everyone with a whip in revealing clothes. Peter Hazen hears all of this and classifies her as a certified psycho chick. As the two of them argue, Shirishi comes and tells them that the government is trying to use Koron to seduce Akuto and is about to send a mage-killing faction called Simon A to assassinate him. She tells her that she will be protecting Akuto and not doing her bidding. Fujiko gets all this information and tries to call Akuto but fails. She then calls Kana and tells her everything. Kana comes to Akuto as he's searching for the spy and is just as annoying as ever. She barely gets the point across and gets drunk afterward. 
She then tries to kiss Akuto multiple times, but Kuron interrupts the party and actually saves him from the FBI. As Akuto and Kuron are arguing if she did it on purpose, Kuron gets a bullet to her head and falls down. The person who shoots Kuron down gets away as Akuto tries to make sure that Kuron is safe. Just as he's helping her get up, she starts asking about his feelings towards Kena. When Akuto says it's not important, she tells him that it is and starts reminiscing about their time together. She then tells him that it's the last time they will be seeing each other and leaves through an invisible door. Kena wakes up and tells Akuto that she was a dumb who forgot to tell him about this as Fujiko mentioned it to her earlier. They go back to the inn to look into the matter properly. On Hiroshi's side, he is in her home having a flashback about the time he was chosen to be a hero by the sorting system. In the present, his sister asks him about the Demon King. He tells her that the Demon King this time around is his friend, and he won't be destroying the town at all. She then asks him if he's the hero. He tells her that he probably does not exist and leaves to go back to the inn. The next day, his sister comes to the inn and asks for Akuto. When he arrives, she asks him if he's the Demon King. He claims that he's not and tells her it's just a myth. She then asks about the whole hero stuff. He tells her that he doesn't believe in it. When it comes to Hiroshi, he tells her that the boy is so shit that he probably doesn't even want to be a hero. But his sister doesn't believe him and runs away with tears in her eyes. Hiroshi then runs away just like a little girl with tears in his eyes. Junko then tells Akuto how big of a dumbass he really is. She tells him that he broke the girl's heart by claiming that he's not the Demon King and then Hiroshi's heart by saying that he's not a hero. Hiroshi runs away and Kena follows her to make the ultimate annoying duo. She tells him that he should keep believing he will become the hero, but Hiroshi tells her that the legend is too far-fetched. He tells her that the legend was made by his family as they are standing in front of the Lake of Legend. There lies a cave at the bottom with a sword in it. The one who pulls it out will be the hero. As they are saying this, they hear a noise from afar. A weird old man is making noises near the lake. He awakens something from the lake and starts plot with Hiroshi's sister. Kena gets naked as usual and tries to distract him. Hiroshi tries to be the hero that her sister wants to be and tries to battle the guy. He fails miserably and falls into the lake. Akuto arrives just then and sees Kena tied like a dog, just like she deserves to be treated, while a cultured old man acts crazy in front of them. He reveals that he will destroy the village, let Akuto take the blame and kill him afterward. He uses an anti-mage weapon that immobilizes them, and that's why Akuto and the others cannot do anything to him. As Akuto is losing, we see Hiroshi drowning in the water. He gets a final burst of courage and decides to pull the sword out. He doubts himself as he does it, but in the end, he is successful as he believes in himself. The sword changes into a watch after getting pulled out, and gives him a Power Rangers suit for his fantasies. As he revels in his newfound powers, Akuto decides to get up and get the job done as he doesn't want to lose the only few friends he has. He gets up, claims that his soul will shout larger, and starts fighting the old man on equal grounds. The two of them exchange some blows as the man starts yapping about his big old evil plan. He wants to instigate war and wants the demon head to be its spearhead. After doing all that, he tries to kill the girls, just as Akuto is about to lose his friends because of his carelessness, Kuron arrives and saves them. She claims that she made a plea bargain and came back. She tells the guy that the government does not recognize his actions as legal, and he must be terminated. Kuron completely obliterates the guy as the anti-mage weapon does not work on her. After that, the gang decides to save the village first before their boring reunions. As they are charging towards the monster, Hiroshi arrives in his outfit and uses some slick moves to kill the monster that has been terrorizing his town. After defeating him, the hero claims that his name is Brave and claims that he will also take care of the person responsible for this mess. He and Akuto share a punch exchange, and knowing that Akuto did nothing, he vanishes into thin air. Just then, Hiroshi comes back and reunites with everyone. He tells them a lie about being saved by Brave. Back home, Kuron tells everyone that she got free because of Mr. X, the old man going rogue. She used that as a bargaining chip to keep being Akuto's observer. When asked about the seduction order, she teases him by saying that the order still stands and that she will try to do whatever is necessary to make him understand the female body. She then tells him that she wants him to marry into a good family. She then suggests Junko as a potential partner. Junko hears this and runs away while blushing, 
Another place, the blonde man who killed Fujiko's brother is standing and thinking about Akuto. Just then, Eiko arrives and asks him what happened to Akuto's death that was supposed to happen in the last battle. The blonde guy says that he has plot armor and has rewritten history. He says that the future is uncertain and it might be time to meet him while Eiko runs away planning something else. Now on Akuto's side, he's relaxing under a tree while he remembers his flashback with Kena. He tells her that he doesn't have any money but she can keep the hairpin. If she still has it by the end, the two of them will become friends. Coming back to the present, Kena comes to Akuto's side and asks for his birthday. He tells her a date but doesn't remember his exact birthday as he does not remember it. He then asks about the hairpin and gets no response from Kena. He tells her that he has seen that hairpin and gave it to someone a long time ago. However, Kena denies it and goes on her merry way, sparing Akuto from the cringe. On Fujiko's end, as she is thinking of some new schemes, she imagines herself having a workout with Akuto. But in reality, she is getting rammed by a tentacle monster. She gets really angry and uses her magic to neutralize the target. But just as the beast gets a chance, it tries to climb its way back into Fujiko's heaven all over again. She uses her magic and tears it to pieces. An egg comes out of the monster's severed body. Peter Hazen comes to the scene and asks what Fujiko is doing. She hides the egg and says that she has been slaying magic beasts all over the place so that Akuto could have a peaceful life. Turns out the number of magic beasts has been increasing day by day since Akuto's awakening. Cutting to Akuto, he and Hiroshi are watching the actions of Brave the Hero on TV with Hiroshi practically sucking his own stick by praising him. Meanwhile, Kena keeps being dumb as she gulps down more and more rice. As she goes away, Akuto starts wondering about what's the deal with her. Hiroshi tells Akuto that Kena's magic is subpar and she can't do anything. So she's looked down upon by others because the ones who can use magic are elite class people in the school. Kuron explains the whole concept of mana and everything that he needs to know about people calling a supercomputer god. Akuto pledges to change the world, especially for Kena, and tries to redeem her annoying a When he encounters her again, he tells her to come to class with him, but she takes off her clothes and runs away, leaving Akuto chasing away a bunch of underwear. When he comes back, Kuron tells him that she has a bad reputation because of Akuto, as well since he's the demon king and she is friends with him. He then tells Kana that he has decided to terminate his relationship with her later in the cafeteria. She gets the completely wrong image and thinks Akuto is trying to protect him since she's dumb. She then flies away once again after bouncing up and down on Akuto's stick in front of everyone. Chunko sees this one, waves an awkward hello, and listens to him talk about the biggest piece of dog shit on this planet Kana on the roof. After listening to him talk about her for so long, she gets annoyed and leaves by saying that she can't help him. She later regrets saying that to him. In Fujiko's room, she has been trying to hatch the egg for Akuto to use as his own magic beast. But as she falls asleep, Kana steals it and uses it for the dumbest freaking thing ever. She tries to make it an egg and rice competition and decides to use the big egg for that. When Akuto touches it, it gets much bigger than earlier and hatches. A weird chicken-like magic beast appears and starts attacking everyone. Akuto tries to stop it, but he doesn't get any good hits in. He then saves Kena and finds out that they are all in this shit because of her mess. But Fujiko arrives just in time to tell everyone that she is the one who bred this thing and she can control it. However, the two-headed chicken picks her up and tears her clothes completely to enjoy the view. Akuto then saves her from death. But then the beast runs away and tries to cause mayhem in the city. But out no fear, Brave the Hero is here as Hiroshi suits up and goes to save the city. The magic beast and Brave start fighting relentlessly, but Brave turns out to be on top. After seeing that someone is trapped on the ground, he goes to reassure them. Turns out that it's a girl and she kisses him as a reward for saving her. She also tells him to keep it a secret. The people come and start praising Bray for his actions while he says that it is his duty. He then leaves after a fair day's work. The next day, Akuto reports all the incidents that happened. Shirishi says that it's alright and he doesn't need to worry about it. As he goes out of the room, he once again meets Kena. She tells him that she'll be coming to class more frequently now. Akuto swears to protect her and tells her to feel safe. Back in the class, as Kuron and Junko are having a conversation about marriage with Akuto, Kuron reveals that she knows about Junko's family and has already sent a formal invitation to her father. 
She then tells her that the father has agreed to a formal marriage proposal meeting. Once again going back to the past, we see that a nobleman is giving the kids in the orphanage tons of donations. As he's giving out money and meeting the children, they thank him for his generosity and those big bucks. They tell him that they will thank God for sending someone like him there. Akuto comes out of his uncle's basement and says that God is just an imaginary concept created by the fools of this era to feel good about themselves. The old noble who is a stern believer of God tells him that he shouldn't say things like that. After a heated argument, the man tells him to shut the hell up as he's giving the orphanage a whole lot of money. Akuto bows his head and quiets down, but he pledges to himself that something like this will never happen again. Coming back to the present, Junko is talking to her father on her telepathic phone. She tells him that Akuto's values do not align with their own and he will not be able to adjust in their family. However, the father claims that he will decide that after meeting him as it is very easy to convert. He cuts the phone, leaving Junko alone with her thoughts. She starts wondering how to ask Akuto about it. Since she has no friends, she tries to think of a solution herself but Corona arrives, makes fun of her, and starts telling her to muster up the courage to go talk to him. The two of them then visit Akuto in the cafeteria. Junko reluctantly invites him to her hometown without really telling him what's going on. By some twist of fate, Hiroshi decides to tag along as well. Later, as Akuto is getting out of the school, he listens to the conversation between the school principal and the blonde guy who killed Fujiko's brother. The blonde guy mentions that he's a government official and is here to warn them about security. He claims that the recent appearances of magical beasts have been due to the presence of irregular mana recently. He looks at Akuto and says that the demon king may be the cause of all of this. Akuto gets frustrated with this conversation and interrupts. The guy then asks him if he even realizes his own responsibility yet, to which Akuto is left speechless. The next day, as they are traveling to Junko's hometown, they finally get rid of Kena and ditch her in the town itself. On the train, Junko tries to tell him what the meeting is really about but is unable to do so. Akuto misunderstands and says that he will take responsibility. Junko gets embarrassed and leaves it to her father to explain the rest. The gang then lands in Junko's hometown. Just as they land, they meet Yuko, Junko's little sister, and the girl, who kissed Hiroshi back when he was brave. She arrives on the scene and embarrasses Junko by asking her about the boy she likes. After some healthy banter, they all reach the house. Junko's father asks him to marry Junko in a roundabout way. Akuto is a dumb so he doesn't understand and says yes, without even knowing what he has agreed to. Everybody starts celebrating but Junko starts having doubts over the whole thing. So she rubs herself in the bath by thinking about Akuto and then decides to clear all misunderstandings. She comes to Akuto's room and starts undressing. Akuto tells her that she doesn't need to force herself. Junko then tells him that this whole meeting was about marriage. Akuto again misunderstands and thinks that Junko doesn't love him. So he says some insensitive stuff to the woman who is already bipolar and causes her to run away. Just as she leaves, all the ninjas in the room who were there to see Akuto rub one out, come out of hiding and start attacking Akuto for breaking their little girl's heart. Akuto starts running away from this crazy bunch of stalkers. After some running, they get caught in a trap set by Eiko as she arrives and tries to once again make Akuto fall to her side. She tells him that her family is much superior and she's ready to have a one-on-one -on -one workout right now. But Akuto refuses and tells her to piss off. She then tells him that she has sent assassins to kill Kanan because of her annoying attitude. Kana is celebrating her birthday all alone like a loser. Her whole room is surrounded by a bunch of assassins as they plan to take her out. On Akuto's side, he starts getting angry and starts fighting Eiko. Just as he's about to destroy her, Yuko comes from behind and starts being even more annoying than Kana. As she's crying about her big sister's tears, Akuto rips open a hole in a tree and decides to go save Kana. Kuron tries to interrupt as she's officially a government agent but willingly gives herself up seeing Akuto so angry. On Kana's side, she is attacked by the assassins but is saved at the last minute by the blonde guy from before. The guy reveals himself to be Yamamoto Buchiro and takes out everyone. He then tells Kana that he was the one who gave her the hairpin. Just then, Akuto arrives by ripping open the atmosphere like a bad and asks for Kana's safety. Yamamoto reveals that Kana is an identity. He says that when he merges with her, he'll be able to destroy the gods. He apps about gods and demons for a while when Akuto asks him if he saved Kana, just to use her later. 
When he says yes, Akuto flips his switch and starts fighting him. As the two of them are fighting and Akuto is on the back foot, Fujiko arrives and saves the day with her collection of magical beasts. She claims that she has learned to control them all with her power, and they will all be serving him. As Akuto holds Kane in her hands, he claims that he will make sure to end this cycle of gods ordering the death of men. Yamamoto then tells him that this is exactly his destiny as the Demon King. As the two brave men stand off against each other, magic beasts destroy the entire school building. Seeing this massive destruction, Yamamoto pulls out a sword and prepares to face off against Akuto. Fujiko says that mana-based attacks shouldn't be possible in this domain, shielded by magic beasts. Akuto says that the attack has nothing to do with mana. Meanwhile, Hiroshi makes his way to Akuto in his brave suit, wondering if he really has gone to the evil side now. Cutting to Eiko now, she is seeing all of this unfold. But just as she's about to have some fun herself, her father teleports there, all bloody and near his death. He tells her that he was done in by Yamamoto Butchiru, and that his daughter must carry his bloodline. She then murders him herself to take the command for herself. On Junko's end, her family is seeing everything on live television as well. As they prepare to take down the Demon King, Junko's father tells her that even though they don't have friendly relations with Eiko's family, the two families must team up to defeat the bigger evil. Junko's grandmother arrives and passes on the family's sword to Junko. She tells her that she must follow her heart and fight for Akuto's stick if she must. She tells her that the sword has not been unsheathed for a long, long time. It will only open when it wants to. Coming back to the battlefield, Akuto and Yamamoto are still at a standstill as they start fighting. The two of them go at it and Yamamoto's sword proves to be too powerful for Akuto. As he falls down, his mana regeneration can't keep up. Just as Yamamoto is about to deliver the finishing blow to the loser, Fujiko takes him away and starts running on top of a magic beast. On the other side, Eiko and Junko's ninja corps gather around the campus and start planning their next moves. Eiko calls the shots while Junko follows her commands. Eiko plans to send Junko and her sister on a suicide mission to get the blade passed through Junko's family for generations so that she can put it up her rice cakes for some pleasure. Junko reluctantly agrees and as the two of them march towards their imminent death, Brave arrives and meets Yanka. He sees that she is not reacting well to the mana around her and has developed a certain disease around her neck. He sees this and gets mad at Akuto for leaving a girl in heat like this. Cutting back to Akuto, as Yamamoto is about to catch up to them, Fujiko reveals that they are going to Peterhausen for aid. They meet the principal at the entrance to the dragon's den. They enter and keep going as he stalls for time with Yamamoto. They also encounter Shiryashi and listen to her lowly yapping before they go and finally reach their destination. As the master and his pet dragon meet, Peter Hausen believes that it's time for Akuto to tap into all his power. Akuto then claims that he will kill God as Fujiko gets wet seeing him like this. Akuto gets on top of Peterhausen, and the two of them soar through the skies like no one has done before. As they make their way back to their enemy, Yamamoto decides to attack them. But the principal stops him in his tracks. Junko then tries to do a sneak attack on him, but the legendary sword still remains in its sheath. As Junko climbs on top of Peterhausen, Akuto sees Junko and carries her like a princess before telling her that he will take good care of her once all of this is done. He then needs her down from the dragon. Brave arrives and damages Peterhausen. After being surprised at his skills, the two of them start duking it out in the skies as Akuto explains how he is going to destroy the philosophy of God itself. Brave still doesn't get it and keeps fighting. On the ground, Junko and Nuko are killing magic beasts one after another while Eiko calls the shots from her camp. Eiko is being advised by a shady man in glasses as he tells her how to get the most out of this battle. He also sends an assassin to kill Junko and Nuko so that Eiko can get her way in the end. But among all these conspiracies, Brave is about to be defeated by Akuto. However, just at the brink of destruction, he pulls a new model of his suit out of his <laughs> Apparently that suit is resistant to mana-based attacks and drains the man out of others at the same time. But more important than Braid is a literal flying airship heading towards Akuto. The government has launched a ship that will annihilate anything on its way. But with the power of Peterhausen, anything is possible. Akuto and his dragon start fighting the airship and start fighting relentlessly. 
Cutting to the principal, he reveals that he was the one who defeated the last demon king along with Yamamoto. He tells him that he knows Yamamoto's true ambition now. He reveals it's to become the demon king himself. As the two of them duke it out on the ground, the battle in the sky concludes with Akuto being victorious. Eiko's advisor on the ground starts controlling the airship through a puppet as it's about to fall and causes it to collide with the academy, while taking Akuto down with the airship. This gives an even worse image of Akuto. Braid becomes worried about Akuto, while Kana starts babbling about war and genocide. Fujiko tries to talk some sense into her, but she says that if she blows up then, maybe everything will become peaceful again. Moving forward in the future, it is revealed that Yamamoto came from the future. He was in love with a blonde and adult version of Kena. However, when she became a singularity for that tasty demon king Magnum, he decided to follow her through time to get her hands on her. He tells the principal that he has suffered time and time again, but this time he will get her hands on her. The principal is tired and heavily injured as he does not have the ability to take on his next attack. Brave then arrives on the scene and tries to act like he's hot shit. He tries to protect the principal but fails to attack Yamamoto as he is the creator of the suit. He then convinces Yamamoto with talk no jutsu that he needs him, and the two of them go inside the cave in which Peterhausen used to live. Meanwhile, Junko is still fighting magic beasts while Yuko is barely hanging on with her life. We then take a look at Shiryashi as she faces off against everyone from Eiko's family as they are trying to hunt down Akuto's remains. She then makes an outrageous statement about Eiko killing her own father, so that there is unrest among her whole army. After she takes care of some fathers, Eiko arrives on the scene and claims that she is simply spreading misinformation. She gathers up her fellows and surrounds Shiryashi, trying to kill her. On Fujiko's side, as she is protecting Kena and the device that she is using to control magic beasts, she suspects that there is an enemy lurking inside. Turns out, it's the same rubberman enemy from before that tried to kill Junko. She tries to kill it over and over again, but it simply tanks all of her attacks, making her look like a useless fool. As both Shiryishi and Fujiko are backed into a corner, the rest of the student council arrives on the scene and saves both of them. The vice president saves Kena from Rubberman's attacks. While the others go to Shiryishi, take care of some enemies, and gather around each other to make the fight more interesting. As they are all taking care of fodders one by one, Yamamoto arrives on the scene on Fujiko's side, Fujiko sees him as her brother's murderer, he only sees Kena from afar. He tries to reason with her but Kena becomes a different person and starts speaking in a different and mature tone. She claims that Yamamoto is acting for his personal goal, and that's why it is impossible for him to succeed. He rejects that theory and then proceeds to kidnap her. Fujiko tries to save her and take her revenge at the same time but Yamamoto claims that she cannot make a difference as long as she has that massive rack and a human heart. She tells him that he is the reason for most of the troubles while he simply blames it on the people for awakening the demon king once again. He then disappears with Kana in his hands. Rubberman breaks free of the vice president's trap and starts attacking her and Fujiko. Fujiko decides to run away once again with the destination of the lab in her mind. On Shirishi's side, as they are battling their way through their defenses, Eiko decides to call Junko to the battlefield so that she can use her to take care of this nuisance. As she calls her, Junko refuses to do her bidding and takes out Shiryishi. Eiko then threatens to use Yuko, her sister as a hostage, to make sure that Junko is obeying her. Junko gets into position as she has no choice and starts praying that Akuto is still alive and is able to turn this situation around. She then stands in the way of Shiryishi and tries to take her down. As she uses her henchmen to capture them in a seal, Eiko's advisor, the puppeteer who took down the airship and Akuto arrives and starts murdering everyone as he has betrayed Eiko as well. He is a member of CIMMY08 and believes that Eiko killed her father. Due to this fasco, the student council escapes and Shiryishi defeats Junko. Eiko tries to kill Yuko but fails to do this as well because Brave arrives to save his side chick and takes her away with Yamamoto. On Fujiko's side, the two of them reach the lab. She tells the vice president to keep the rubberman busy while she goes in to find something useful. She comes back with a liquid nitrogen tank and breaks the rubber man. However, the lower half escapes. The two of them then decide to aid the people on the surface. Coming back to Shiryishi and the others, she starts hitting Eiko. But Eiko makes her escape somehow. She then stands face to face with the puppeteer. He doesn't want to mess with the crazy low Lee, so he proposes a truce. But Shiryishi decides to fight it out instead. 
but Fujiko arrives on the battlefield and aids her. With the two of them pairing up, they obliterate the puppeteer. However, they find out that the main body is a doll as well. So he survives and hopes to never see her again. After all of this is taken care of, Akuto rises from the bottom of the airship and lifts it up. He shows off his power and his abs to the ladies. Everybody stands in awe of his powers and sees him rise from a near-death situation. He gets back up, meets up with his fellows, confirms that Kena is gone, and decides to follow Yamamoto Buchiro. He gets the blessing of everyone and leaves on the back of Peterhausen to end this whole fiasco once and for all. On Junko's end, Eiko once again orders her to kill Akuto. But she decides to rebel and tells her to shut her trap. Everyone from her family tells her that she must follow her commands even if she doesn't like them because she will destroy their family otherwise. However, Junko decides to follow the path of love and ditch her family for a meaty magnum. Following her true self, she pulls out the blade from her back. Seeing the Suhora blade unsheath, the blade that has been passed through generations and generations of the Hattori family, everybody agrees that Junko must follow through her path however she likes. She takes out the blade, one-shots all the goons on Eiko's side, and completely defeats Eiko. Just as she's about to strike the final blow, Corona arrives and tells her that this ugly needs to live so that she can get tortured for her sins. And so the battle of these girls concludes. She then looks at Akuto going past the horizon, remembering his promise and wishing him luck. However, a familiar enemy, Brave is coming towards him to stop him in his tracks. Brave and Akuto come face to face with each other. Brave then starts attacking him. Peter Hazen asks Akuto how to tackle it. Akuto tells him that he'll be taking it head on. And so, he goes to him and takes the entirety of his attack head on. Brave's attack completely obliterates one half of his body. As the attack penetrates his body more and more, Brave starts feeling bad for Akuto. When the attack finishes, the two of them start falling to the ground like lovers. Just then, Akuto heals his body and saves them both from a lethal fall. He then breaks the mask and confirms that it's indeed Hiroshi behind that hero persona. Yuko is watching them fall and tries to chase them. As she gets to them, she sees Hiroshi's face. He apologizes for lying to her about not being brave, but she accepts it and hugs him. Akuto then decides to continue his mission. However, Hiroshi asks him to heal Yuko's reaction to the magic beasts. Akuto replies that there's no cure for useless fodders and says that it will all be fine once he kills God. Coming to Yamamoto's side, he carries Kena across a facility that apparently hosts the god in his control center. As he walks through the facility, eradicating everyone in his path, he starts talking to Kena about his master plan. He wants to replace God and make a new system. He has failed over and over again. Kena, hosting some other person's spirit, tells him that it is of no use. She is the identity. She must merge with the Demon King and the Singularity System as that is her fate. Yamamoto does not believe her even though he has failed countless times, both in the past and the future. He ignores everything she says, tells her he's in love with her, and grabs her by her hand. Kena's own spirit comes back amidst all she starts running away from EDP. Just then, Akuto arrives on the scene and makes a bold entrance. He challenges Yamamoto to a battle. He pulls out his blade and starts attacking Akuto. He slices him in half, only to find out that it was just a mirror reflection. Akuto comes from behind and slaps him into oblivion. He then announced that their goals may look the same but he is here to kill God instead of controlling it. One of the soldiers on the ground recognizes Akuto as the Demon King and tells him that the whole purpose of Demon Kings is to merge with identity and then destroy humanity. He says that he was aware of this fact but he will not be merging with Kena and will definitely find another way. The girls claim that everything up till now has been a part of God's plan. Yamamoto tried to merge with Kena, who has an identity. That's why he needed to be stopped. Akuto did exactly that. Just as they are talking, the defense mechanism of God gets activated and the entire facility is lifted up in the sky. Akuto calls upon Peterhausen for this one final mission. He plans to go through with his idea, even if it means his own death. Kena follows him through as she doesn't want Akuto to die. She then removes her clothes in the air. Akuto and Peterhausen make their way inside the facility. The dragon shoots open a hole in the tree, and the two of them enter its pseudo-realm. The two of them then encounter a bunch of archers as they rain down a flurry of arrows on the two of them. Peterhausen isn't affected by their pesky fodder attacks and keeps moving forward like a chad. 
As he gets near the core, he brings out all kinds of wires out of his to absorb God. The archers start attacking once again, and Akuto starts fighting them, and emits a huge blast from his body. This eliminates all the pesky enemies. However, just as the absorption process is near completion, the final defense mechanism of God is to open a multi-dimensional hole. The hole tries to suck Akuto and Peterhausen in, but if Akuto releases all of his power, then he will be able to completely destroy the whole god and the entire pseudo-dimensional space. However, Akuto becomes a b at the end and starts getting second thoughts. He then thinks to himself that he must stand up now and not think of anything at all. As he's prepared to die, Kana arrives and starts asking Peterhausen about the consequences. She tells him that she doesn't want Akuto to sacrifice himself. Peterhausen tells her that he will make sure that his master survives, however, he cannot guarantee his own safety. Kana objects to this as well. But Peterhausen is ready to sacrifice himself and leaves Kana a tooth from his mouth to remember him by. And so, the explosion blinds everyone present in the tree and Kana enters a spiritual word, she meets another version of herself there. She tells Kana that she's another part of her, and she's the reason they all wanted to capture Kana. She then tells Kana that they must do something to give Akuto his normal life back, as this might make him happy. And so the two of them decide to save Akuto and give him his life back. Coming outside Kana's mind, Akuto completely blows the entire facility up, obliterating everything that used to be called God. As everybody watches the explosion from afar, they come near the crater left by the explosion to check on Akuto. As expected, Akuto is safe and sound. He reunites with his friend and hears that everyone in the entire world, who knew he was the Demon King, has had their memories altered except for his friends. Turns out, all of this is Kana's doing so that Akuto can live his life peacefully. And so, Akuto spends the rest of the days as a normal high school student with a really big harem. But there's still one more twist left in the story, as Akuto once again gets deemed as the Demon King by the sorting system starting at another big fiasco as the adventures of Akuto, the Demon Lord continue. Will Akuto get bullied again? Will he finally be able to pick a chick to settle with this time around? Fill the comments with the chance of praise the Demon Lord to help him get through all of this. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more freshly brewed anime content from our side. See you in our next video.